First of all, I will talk about bending stresses in beams when the element, in addition to the moment, is subjected to axial force. This is what we call it combined loading. Look at this figure. Look at this column, which is subjected to just axial force. This column looks like an axially loaded element, but this is not just an axially loaded element. In addition to that axial force, there will be one extra moment. We call that moment as eccentric moment. Let me show you how is, what is that eccentric moment. Consider the distance of that force from the center of that section is E. Okay? That is what we call it eccentricity. That is distance from the centroid. If we move that force to the centroid like this, that force acts as axial force in that column. But when we move a force, that movement causes a moment. Okay? This is what we have learned before in statics. What is the value of that moment? How we can determine the value of that moment? Let us do that here. This is the moment that I'm talking about, mx. This moment is acting about the x-axis. Use the right-hand rule. Consider the direction of p. The thumb shows the direction of x-axis. So the moment is acting about the x-axis. How we can determine the magnitude of that moment? The magnitude of eccentric moment is simply force times the distance of that force to the centroid, which in this case is E. So M is P times E. M is the eccentric moment, or the indirect moment caused by the eccentric force. P is the eccentric load, or the axial force. And E is distance of load from center of the section. All right? So here, this is a combined loading problem because that column subjected to force, axial force, and bending moment. Now let's focus on how to calculate the stresses caused by each of these two forces, axial force and bending moment. So we can look at that from different view. And the distance or eccentricity is actually the distance from that load to the centroid. Okay? We can look at that from top, like that, or from the uh, front view. So let's see what would be the stresses caused by these two loads, axial force and bending moment. I'm going to cut the section somewhere on the bottom of the uh, column and put the forces acting on that cut section. There is a moment and there is an axial force acting on the cut section. And the moment in this case is acting about the x-axis the one that is shown in orange, dashed line orange. Um, first, how much is the stress caused by the axial force? Stress caused by the axial force is simply F over area, or P over area. Okay? I will use sigma sub A to show that this is, stress act, this is the stress caused by the axial force. And that would be a normal stress. This is what we have learned in uh, chapter 3, the axially loaded elements, force over area, okay? The distribution of this stress is uniform across the section. So every point in that section gets the same stress, all right? Let me write the equation like this. Sigma A is F over A, and that is the normal stress caused by the axial force. Now, let's consider the effect of moment. The moment acts on the section like this. What is the formula that I should use to calculate the stress caused by moment? Sigma is mc over i. m is the acting moment, i is the moment of inertia of the cross section, and c is distance of each point to the center of the section. Okay? And we learned that this stress is like this. On one side, it's compressive, and on the other side, it's tension. So if I zoom into this area, the value of the stress is zero at the centroid, and it's maximum on the sides. What would be the case if both of these two forces act at the same time on the cut section? I can use the principle of superposition and add the effect of each of these two forces together to come up with the overall uh, stress distribution on that section. So First, let me write down the equation for bending stress. Here, I used sub B 
to mention that this stress is caused by bending. Sigma B is MC over I. I use plus and minus sign because on one side is positive and on the other side is negative. So that is the normal stress caused by bending moment. And now we are ready to calculate how much is the overall stress at the cut section. I simply add these two stresses together. The stresses is added together on one side. Look at this. For these two shapes, on the left side, they are both compressive, so they are adding together. And on the right side, one is negative, one is positive. So I need to subtract the values from each other. So the stress distribution for this case looks like this. Okay? It is still linear. It is not constant. It has a zero value, but the zero value is not at the centroid anymore. It's somewhere else. Okay? And how can I calculate the value of bending stress at any point? The equation to determine that is this one. Sigma is F over A plus MC over I, or minus MC over I, depending on what side of the uh, beam or what side of the column I'm talking about. All right, so the overall stress is sigma is F over A plus and minus MC over I, and that is the total normal stress. So that's it. That's one thing that I wanted to talk about how to calculate the stresses caused by bending and axial force. Let's solve a problem to understand the concept better.